The way you guys have what is called the vice lords today. I live in LA, we got Crips and Bloods. <laughs> Stupid. But at the end of the day, you got gangs in, Cal in uh, Chicago. Now imagine UNICEF, uh, imagine the United Nations today coming out and saying anybody who could write about Africa in Chicago is going to go to Africa. Then the leader of the vice lords sits down and writes an essay. Finishes his essay, sends it into UNESCO, uh, 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 to UNICEF. He wins the contest. Mm. Imagine, it's like 600 co people, thousands of people from all over New York are trying to get this, get in this contest. Intellectuals, kids getting A's in school, others, everybody's in this contest. The leader of the biggest gang in New York writes and wins the contest. He wins. They sent him to Africa. He goes to Africa, sits down with a Zulu chief in Africa. And the Zulu chief says, you know, the same thing you African Americans are doing there, we Africans are plagued by that for thousands of years. In fact, the same thing you do in there is the reason why you were enslaved here. This constant disunity this constant, or oh, what she got on, or oh, what he got on, or oh, why he driving that, or oh, why she looking like that. That is the reason why Europe was able to come into Africa and enslave the continent. The Zulu chief brought this out to Africa Bambada, made him an honorary Zulu chief, and sent him back to America. He goes back to America, leader of the uh, leader of the black spades at that time, and he says, "I'm not a gang leader no more. I, my eyes are open. I know what this whole thing is, and the whole thing is a setup." He sits down with other gang leaders and explains to them his trip to Africa. Their eyes open. Now we got a gang truce in New York that occurred in 75 under the leadership of Africa Bambada. Gangs were over in New York City. They wouldn't return until the 90s. Until the 90s gangs would return. But in 75, all the gang leaders got together and Africa Bambada they deaded the gangs. It was no longer cool to be in a gang in New York. Instead, everyone joined what is now called Zulu Nation. Africa Bambada said, leave the gang and join Zulu Nation. Here, we teach the Quran and the Bible. <clears throat> gang members flocked to Zulu Nation. Everybody in New York was part of Zulu Nation. Everybody. Africa Bambada goes further and he says, what is hip-hop all about? He said, peace, love, unity, and having fun. These are the principles. What is hip-hop all about from a cultural point of view, from a street point of view? Why are we doing this? What's the point? The point is peace. To be able to love and to receive love. Unity. All this infighting and you, your block, my block, your, your building, my... Get rid of that. And then he threw in the last piece, having fun. Now, I find that remarkable that Africa Bambada would look at a young culture and say, peace, love, unity, having fun as a part of a balanced life. Having fun? Well, when I got a little more knowledge... I started studying the Constitution of the United States, another document that each and every one of you should have knowledge of. Get knowledge of the United States Constitution. Today's fascist government that we call the United States government, which is really a major corporation, thank you, really just a major corporation in the end of it, 
these people are trying to get rid of the Constitution. And the reason they're trying to get rid of the United States Constitution is because the world is globalized now. There's no such thing as countries anymore. Those words are for poor people. We keep thinking we live in America. No, you live in the world. In another 10 years, there'll be no border between Mexico and America and Canada and America. There'll be one currency for the entire North American continent. Canada, the United States, and Mexico will be one country in your lifetime. Now you gotta think to yourself, where do I stand in these global changes? How do I stand? Where, where, where am I in all of this? Am I just going to get pushed to the side like millions of people right now? Or am I going to heed this knowledge, prepare myself, and get what I'm supposed to get? <clears throat> what you supposed to get? Peace, love, unity. You're supposed to have fun. That fun part brings us to the Constitution. Because the Constitution, federal law is the pursuit of happiness. Domestic tranquility. This is federal law. If you're not having fun, you're breaking federal law. <laughs> Literally, I'm just saying, you're breaking federal law. If you're moping around, you're breaking federal law. It is the law for you to be happy, to be joyous. But now, how are you going to do that? And I'm going to cut it right here, Joanne. Well, how many times? Like two, one minute. One minute. No, we, we got to take some pictures with the. No problem. I'll bring this down in one minute. Because this is a conversation that obviously is longer than what we have time for here today. But I want to put this information on your head because I don't know when I'll see you again. And I'm traveling, you know, I'm traveling, <laughs> you know, wherever I'm going. Uh, but it's important that you understand what I'm saying to you. I am a celebrity that comes here and goes, hi, I leave, you stay. Who's the real leadership here? I can only come and inspire and say, yo, this is what it is, take a look at that, take a look at this, so and so, but then I leave. Now the question then becomes, where's the leadership? There's only about two people in this room that's really leadership, really. Everybody may think they are, but only action answers that question. Talk doesn't answer that question. You gotta get out and actually do something. So that's why we launched the Stop the Violence Movement. It started in 1989 with a record we put out called Self-Destruction. We took it upon ourselves to warn our own community about their own immaturity. We run around shooting at each other. Come on, man. We got enough problems with the cops shooting at us. Why are we shooting at each other? Well, we put this record out called Self-Destruction. It came out. It was a huge success. We raised $600,000 for the National Urban League. Half a million dollars. Now, you guys think about that. If you was to raise a half a million dollars on a record, what would you do with the money? And this is where I want to, this is the question I'd like to ask you, because it'll help us determine what we're going to do when the money from our project come in. I'm going through high schools. Why? Because I think the entertainment industry, wait a minute, forget entertainment. Hip hop is a $10.5 billion industry every year. Hip-hop's yearly income is larger than some small countries. Jamaica don't have a $10.5 billion annual budget. Puerto Rico. The I think hip-hop can put arts back in public schools. I think hip-hop can finance music, art, like graphic art and sports in every school in the United States. 